Well guys, welcome back to Raymore Repair. We're going to do the fork seals on the KD-175. We're going to drop the caps off the bottom. We'll do the same on the other side. Grab our washer there. That didn't take too much, did it? All right, there's our wheel out of the way. This is a guide for the front brake cable that's currently non-existent. We have uh, two clamps down here and one up above. And that looks like it's a 13, oddly enough. In true old Kawasaki fashion, these are 12s, that's a 13. Let's go ahead and drop the other side. Now we may have got our cart ahead of the horse here a little bit. We should have cap popped these caps loose while it was still in the bike, but we're going to give it a shot out of the bike. Oh yeah, they're not that tight. So that's loose. I don't want to take it up any farther because there's an O-ring in here. And we're going to have to flip this fork over and get a bolt out of the bottom of it. So we'll leave this just like it is for now. I have no idea how much oil is actually in these forks, but we'll find out together. Now oh, the guts are turning. Quack with the impact and see if we can get it to knock loose. It's not much of an impact, but it is an impact nonetheless. There it come loose. Maybe. There's a special tool that slides inside this fork and holds this from turning, and I don't have that tool here, so I'm trying to <laughs> load it up enough I don't need it. And it's turning pretty stinking freely. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, take the fourth spring out and see if we can get something in there. We'll go ahead and pull our, I already pulled this dust boot up and the circlip and the spring, re, or the seal retainer washer. And I did that to see if I could figure out was I the fork seal I needed for this. And I can figure out the ID and the OD, but I can't, I don't know how thick it is. And when I look this up online, it get all kinds of conflicting information. It probably would tell me in a service manual, but I don't have one of those either. Not for this sweetheart. I'm much more of a well, I got a lot more experience in the Hondas and Suzuki's than I do in Kawasaki's. So we're going to go ahead and pop our cap out. There's probably a little bit of spring pressure here, but not very much. It's coming. Boing. And there it goes. We get some, boy, if you could smell this. Wow. It smells bad. We're going to pull our fork spring out. I'm going to use a shop rag here to kind of control the oil that has a tremendous stench to it. Now you can see we do have, 
a tighter wound spring down here and it gets looser up here. So it's kind of a progressive design where the more rounds of spring there is, the softer the spring is, and then the less there is, the stiffer the spring is. So it's kind of the best of both worlds there. Well, best as they can get. There is oil in it, but she certainly has been leaking Ugh, already. I still should have wore gloves. I bet I can wash my hands 10 times and it'll still stink like that oil does. All right, let's roll our fork over and get the oil out of it. See if we can get you on the pan here. I'm gonna take this out of the vise to do this. Oh yeah, she's nice. Well, not much oil in it. All right, we're gonna try again to get this uh, bolt out of here now that we got the spring out. Let's see if we can pull down on it hard enough to actually create enough friction for the impact to work. There we go. Let me explain a little bit about how this fork works. This is the outer tube. You've seen it. The fork seal is still in here. Now this fork does not use fork bushings. <clears throat> it just runs against the case there. So this is our damping rod and it lives down inside this fork tube. Like this. It goes down in here and then this is bolted. This is bolted to the bottom of this with this bolt. It comes up through here and screws into here. So this is anchored to the lower fork leg. This tube, this would typically set in here like this. So this is anchored to the fork leg and as this goes up and down, this rod stays here. And in fact, I'm doing this backwards. This rod's attached to the, the out, this fork tube is attached to the bike. This one's attached to the wheel. So as this goes up and down, it makes this rod go up and down through here. And that rod does a couple of different things. As the oil inside the fork, inside of here, as this rod moves up and down, hang on just a second here, let me get some of the gooshiness off this thing. There we go. As this rod moves up and down through this fork tube, goes this way once again, the oil has to pass past this. And this is designed to slow down the movement of the fork. Oil can come in down here and it can come out up here. And this kinda seals against the fork tube, the inner portion of this. So as this goes up and down, it forces the oil through there and that's what slows down the fork movement. Now this also has a spring that goes on here and also has this thing that goes in the bottom. This spring is designed to limit whenever it tops out. Whenever this piece slides up, it'll hit this spring and it'll top it out without banging on everything. It's just a way of slowing it down. This is for bottoming out. When this fork slides all the way down, it hits this cone. The oil in here cushions it and slows it down before it bottoms out. It goes thud, kind of like that. So all this is mounted in here like this using our bolt up through the middle of the lower fork tube and it sits in here like this. This tube here rides in here. So whenever this tube comes up, it hits the top out spring. If it comes down, it can hit, a, hit this. And this is just designed to be a bottom out device. And it's, you can see it's kind of cone shaped. And as it comes down and slides over this, it starts plucking off these holes and that allows the oil to cushion this before it just bangs against the bottom. So that's essentially what's inside this fork, along with, of course, the fork spring. The fork spring sits on the top of this, and that's what holds the whole bike up. It holds, the spring goes up against this cap, and this cap goes on the top of here, top of here. So essentially, imagine this all together, that this is inside of here, 
and this is down here like this and this has to go up against the spring in order to move so that's essentially what you got clear as mud probably but that's what's happening here i want to pop this seal out of here see if we can actually get you to focus on that part uh i want to pop this seal out of here and see exactly what size of seal we have and i'll measure that up and then i'll know what i can get um, all the aftermarket books that I found list KDX 175s, but they don't list the KD 175. Now, as much as I think they're the same, the KDX may have had different front suspension. I just don't know. So with that said, I don't want to guess. I want to pop this seal out, see what the dimensions are, and then get a seal by dimensions. Then we'll put this back together. Also, we need to clean this fork tube up. You can see there's rust up here at the top pretty heavily. But down here in the stroke, there's a couple of places I can feel that will be a problem. And our fork stroke is from about here to here. We're going to have about, I don't know, six inches of stroke maybe, maybe seven. And we need to make sure that this is as clean as it can be so the seal can stick to it. I can feel right there. I don't know if I will show up on camera or not, but there's a divot right there. And that is within the spring's travel. I think I got most of that off. But... Uh, we need to make sure this is all clean. Otherwise, our seal is uh, not gonna last. Now I'm just gonna let that drain in the pan and take this top bolt out, or bottom bolt out. Not much oil in that one either. All right, we're gonna try to get this bolt out once again. There it goes. We'll just take a pick and run underneath the edge of it and work it up. Kind of like that. Back this way. Down inside of here is a snap ring. The ends of the snap ring over here. I'm going to try to work this snap ring out of its groove. Well, it came out, but it didn't get lost. That's a good thing. Then we had the little seal retaining washer. Then we had the fork seal itself. Now I'm going to use a pry bar to get in there and pop that seal out. But what I don't want to do is damage my edge over here on the opposite side of the pry bar. So I need to lay something in there to keep that from happening. This is a piece of an inner tube that I cut up for rubber bands and such. Let's see if we can pop this out of here. If we need to take it out of this vise and put it in the other vise to make it more steady. There we go. There's our fork seal. See if we can see some numbers on this baby. 32 by 44. 32 ID, 44 OD, a 10 or 11 thick will do it. All right, we got our fork seals out and got these cleaned up a bit. And we're gonna go ahead and put our fork seals in. I've taken the fork seals and put a little bit of uh, uh, fork oil on them, some SS8 Honda fork oil. We're gonna use 10 weight oil in this. Ooh, look at that, first try. Grab a hammer that has a little more persistence to it. And our seal goes right down in there. Give it just a little love tap here. Got a hard surface underneath it and it uh, goes right on. We'll put our ring in here. And then our circlip. Now, if this thing's had bushings, if this had bushings in it, we couldn't do it like this. We need to put the fork tube in, then the bushing, then the keeper, then the seal, so on and so forth. But since these are simple, that works just fine.
All right, we're going to set our inner fork tubes together. Get you set up just a little bit differently here. That should do it. This is our inner fork tube that we were working on just a minute ago. We're going to take and slide this down inside of here, just like this. It's going to go all the way to the bottom. We're going to shake it, and it's going to come out the bottom, just like that. This is what limits the travel of the fork and hold this together. We'll do the same thing with the other one. Just make sure our spring's on here and slide that sweetheart in there. This can come out all, all on its own, so that's good. Now we have these cones. They'll go on the bottom of this, right here. So, just like that. We need to make sure that stays on there whenever we're assembling this. So, we'll take our outer fork leg here and you're just falling out of frame here this one already has that cone in it so it just slides in here like this slides down then we'll take a fork spring and set it in there i like putting these with the tighter wind to the top the reason i do that is because less spring moves at the top than it does the bottom some people think that's counterintuitive that's okay you don't have to do it the way I do it. This is just the way I do it. So let me grab a tool to fit on here. Now we're going to put this back in the same way we took it out. We're going to get our impact and give it just a little tappy tap and uh, make it go in. That's one side together except for torquing that bolt. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other side. See if we can get a better film on it. Or better. Here's our top out cone or a bottom out cone actually. We have top out springs in there and this is a bottom out cone. We're going to slide this up so it all stays together. Then we're going to slide this fork tube on. We got our seal and everything in there. I want to make sure it gets started in the seal right. And just push it to the bottom. We're going to do the same thing with our spring. We're going to put the tightly wound part to the top. Just like that. And then we'll grab our other bolt. Their sealing washers are already in here. So if you're wondering about that, they are in place. I do believe that will work. Pump it a little bit to get the oil to go down below that tube. Where my fingers are, and then where the oil seriously starts to be on the spring right there. I'm going to call that pretty good. That's about six inches or so of oil level, so we're going to go with that. All right, now we'll put our cap on. This gives me a lot more to hold on to. And I'll be able to hold it much straighter with a little more mass to it. There it started, I think. Just run it on up. Now this does not need to be incredibly tight, but we'll tighten these up after we put it back in the bike. And that way we'll uh, have something to hold on to our fork. And then our little fork boot will go down on here, just like that. And there we are, fork boots in place. That fork is pretty much done. Pump it. Work the air out of it. At least the closure, you can probably hear the air. Hear that air in there? We're just going to pump that a bit and get that out of there. The oil level's down here somewhere. Let's do the same thing with this fork. Put this in here and then kind of see where we got our oil level. It's really close to the same, so I'm happy with that. Now on the other fork, 
I did not put this sweetheart in. This goes on top of the spring. So uh, we'll have to take that cap back off and put it on it. It just sets on top of the spring like that and works as a cap. Ah, you can't see. It sets on top of the spring and it's just a cap like that. I gotta take the other fork back apart and put that in there. So we'll run this up. Grab our fork cap and our socket. So here and shove it down and give it a twirl. The old shove and twirl. I think we got her. Yeah, we do. We got it. Like that. Once again, we'll tighten it up after it gets on the bike. Slide our uh, dust cap on. And there we go. Dust cap's on. That baby is ready to install. This baby, we got to take the cap back off and put that other piece in there. Put this sweetness in there. The cap, and then we'll do the old shove and twirl once again. There we go. Two forks ready to go on the bike. Now this one will go on the left side because it's got this block for the brake to hook to. Somebody's out running around the neighborhood. Some two-strokey thing or another. This is the front brake guide. Needs to go in there. And we're gonna set these so they're even with the top with just the cap sticking out. And then we'll tighten her up just enough. By just enough, I mean enough to hold that play thing in place. This is gonna end up down here. You give these other two a tappy tap. An ugga dugga, if you will. As Mr. O says. Top ones are 13, the bottom ones are 12s. Tighten that up just enough. Now what I'm looking here for, what I'm looking for here is just a consistency between them. They do not need to be super tight. Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 to 22 foot pounds. That's where we'd be on that. Now we'll set the other side in. That's a bit unplanned. This is gonna fall on. This strap's got a hold of it. So uh, get my jack loosened up. Get it back under here. Yeah, that happened. Let's see if I can get this hump back up. From the ground it arose there we go starting to make me question how well this thing is supported that'll be about right uh, you can kind of see it that high Raise you up just a touch. So we're setting this so just the cap is out. Everything else is still in there. And with that set where I want it, so we're going to give it a bit. And we'll do the same thing with this side with the uh, lowers here.
If you notice, I am going from one bolt to the other. Now, if you don't have a feel for what tight is, please use a torque wrench. But I can tell you, your forks will not act right if you over torque these. There we go. Forks are back in. <laughs> Catastrophe averted. And that's what there is to putting fork seals in this thing. All right, guys, that does the forks on this KD175. Uh, this is about a 78 model, and the forks are really simple in this thing. There's just not much to them. So we got them, the fork seals replaced, all the goo cleaned out of them, got everything cleaned up, got our fork oil level set. We set it about five and a half to six inches from the top with a spring in it. This isn't going to be a play bike on a rider that is not a fast rider. He's plunking around and following kids around and stuff. So we don't want to set it up super stiff. We want to set it up so it's nice and plush and easy for him to ride. So that's what we've done. I would really appreciate it if you would go down and leave a comment and let me know what you like to see. Uh, anything I can provide for you guys, any questions I can answer, criticisms, um, anything like that, please leave it in the comments. While you're there, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell if you want to. That'll let you know whenever more com content is coming out. And um, I'll just keep making videos and hopefully you guys like them and you can tell me whether you do or don't. Thank you. God bless.